Uh, hi everybody and welcome to the seventh Oxygen XML Editor related webinar that we are hosting this year. My name is Radu Koravu and I will be the webinar's host. We invited our colleague George Bina to present all benefits that you can obtain when working with Oxygen projects. George is one of the owners of Syncrosoft, the company which produces Oxygen XML Editor. He has more than 10 years experience in working with XML and uh, related technologies and he also participates in various XML related open source projects. George spends a lot of time developing proof of concept XML implementations and switching between projects and tasks and during the years he had lots of valuable feedback about XML project management feedback which we took and incorporated in the current support Oxygen provides for managing projects. This webinar is recorded and if you cannot attend for its entire length, the recording will be made available in a couple of days via email to all participants. During the webinar you can ask at any time questions and either me or my colleagues will attempt to answer them. At the end of George's presentation, we will have a live question and an answer section where we go through some of the most relevant questions and formulate public answers. So, without any further delay, hi George. Uh, hi Radu, thanks for introducing me. Um, yeah, so as Radu mentioned, uh, uh, we had a number of webinars this year and uh, some of the feedback we received uh, after those webinars was that it would be very useful to discuss about oxygen projects, to have a webinar dedicated to oxygen projects uh, because some people just close the project view and uh, never use this uh, functionality. So. Uh, we decided to have this webinar to show uh, some of the benefits uh, Oxygen projects provide. So let's uh, first try to see uh, why do we need uh, projects. So. Uh, when you work on a specific task, uh, you need access to some uh, specify, specific resources, uh, usually some folders uh, where you have the files that you work with uh, to be able to open them easily and uh, maybe to perform some uh, operations on some of those files, on all of them or uh, the files from a specific folder in general a subset of, uh, of uh, those files. Examples of such operations may be uh, validating all the files in a folder or checking the, uh, for spelling errors uh, to find a place uh, in all of those files and so on. Uh, you may need also to, to, to have specific tool settings uh, when working with uh, those files and I'm uh, thinking here about uh, controlling uh, the number of spaces or the line width for formatting and indenting. Uh, if we uh, talk about spell checking, um, then you may need to have uh, custom dictionaries or a list of words specific for working with those files. Uh, maybe layout information so you can have some actions or some side views uh, immediately available and hide others that are not relevant for that task. You may also want to customize the editing support Oxygen provides for data or dark book or the XML language that you are using and so on. And usually uh, you cannot work on a single task, so usually you have multiple tasks and you need to switch uh, between them, so that's another important uh, uh, use case uh, 
when you switch between different tasks, how do you re-enter in the context for that specific task? Without wasting time to manually restore the state you were uh, when you closed uh, that, when you moved away from that task. So these are, uh, I think, the main uh, needs uh, of someone that works with uh, XML and uh, and oxygen projects uh, are, are our response uh, to try to solve those needs. So we try to provide uh, solutions for uh, eliminating the task switching overhead. Uh, so basically uh, a project will define an editing context that can be remembered and restored when you reopen that project. So Oxygen is restoring automatically the files that were open last time you worked on that project, uh, keeping the same editing page, uh, text, author, et or uh, grid, or design, or uh, and placing the current at the same location in the file that uh, you were editing uh, when you closed that project. Uh, projects uh, allow you to control uh, specific settings relevant to working with a specific set of files. Uh, settings which uh, may be shared with the team if multiple users use the same project. You can store at the project level almost any uh, preference page, any preferences uh, from, from Oxygen. Uh, and also transformation scenarios can be stored within the project. Uh, actually, the project is the default storage for transformation scenarios. Uh, with respect to access to resources, uh, Oxygen allows you to organize resources in, uh, into uh, what we call logical folders. Uh, these are basically containers that can store links to actual folders that you have on disk, uh, links to specific files, uh, or you can create other logical folders within them. Uh, and then you can invoke different contextual actions uh, on uh, uh, the selected uh, set of resources. So the, the, the Oxygen project information is stored in an XML file uh, having the extension .xpr, st which stands for uh, XML project. And these files uh, contain uh, the pointers to different resources that are linked within the project, uh, information of how those resources are organized into logical folders, as well as different options or transformation scenarios that are defined at the project level. Uh, so they are stored basically within this uh, uh, XML file, the, the .xpr file. Additional information like the editing context uh, for each project is not stored within the project file uh, because that is specific to each user um, but it, and it will generate uh, too many uh, project file changes especially if you share the project uh, between uh, multiple users and use a versioning system, then you will get uh, changes for basically anything that you do. You open a file, then you will get a change uh, in the project file. So that's why we store that information uh, associated to a project, but not within the project. So this uh, uh, editing context is specific to each user and is stored in a, uh, separate from the project file uh, in the user options basically um, and it's only associated to the project. Uh, 
the main interface uh, between you and the project information is done through uh, what we call the project view. Uh, this allows you to create new projects, open existing projects, it gives you access to uh, the project structure, provides actions to interact with that structure, uh, to create new folders, uh, adding resources, moving them around and organize them as you need, and so on. The project view also provides uh, access to a number of uh, batch actions uh, that will act on the current project selection, allowing you to easily update or find uh, information in a set of files. So, uh, there are also other uh, actions uh, that are not directly available, uh, that are not available within the project view, but that use the project uh, information. Uh, so, the project information will be available in the options dialog, uh, will be available in the transformation scenarios dialog, and uh, uh, some operations uh, will act on uh, uh, a set of files from the project, for instance. So, uh, although they are triggered from other parts of the user interface, uh, they interact with the project information. So, uh, let's, let's uh, switch to Oxygen and see, you know, where is the project view uh, um, and see, see, see how that looks like. The project view uh, will be usually located uh, in the top left part uh, of the editor. But if this is closed, like I just closed it, uh, you can make that visible from uh, window, show view, project. Right? And that will uh, make the project view visible. Uh, now, the user interface in Oxygen is uh, completely customizable, so basically you can take the project view uh, and move it uh, someplace else. Uh, like now it's stuck with the attributes and model and so on. Uh, that's why I said that usually uh, it is available in the left top part of the editor. If you uh, did not move that to another location. Okay. Uh, then uh, you can create uh, logical folders. So even the project itself uh, is uh, is a is a container, a logical uh, container where you can add uh, different resources, uh, either files or other logical folders. So here uh, you see you have this. Uh, uh, create logical folder, so uh, you can add, uh, maybe let's say we put uh, sources, for instance, and to this folder now uh, we can add a real folder, a link to a real folder that you have on disk, or uh, you can add uh, just specific files. So if we say add folders, so, for instance, we can add uh, the first demo folder that we have here, and now this will appear uh, here in the uh, uh, SRC folder. Uh, if you want to add only a file, uh, you can just, you can also drag and drop from uh, Finder, for instance, uh, now we can remove this from projects. So in this uh, logical folder, we have now only uh, a pointer to a file. So logical folders basically allow you to organize uh, uh, resources. Then you have uh, contextual actions. So if you right-click on a, uh, a folder, on a, usually on 
after you select some uh, resources from the project, you have here a number of uh, contextual actions uh, that will act on the current selection. Um, and uh, we have then uh, this uh, settings button here uh, that allow you to select different filters so uh, uh, to hide some files uh, from view or uh, uh, you can hide the different directories and so on so you can control what's visible uh, in, uh, in the project view. Uh, you can also uh, choose uh, whether you see the full path of uh, resources that are presented here or only the file name. Uh, usually the file name, so the default is a better choice. The project also uh, gives you access to reopen uh, other projects that you opened previously. So from here you can see uh, different projects that you worked with so the recent uh, projects and you can just uh, uh, immediately switch uh, between multiple projects using this drop-down. Also you can create new projects or open a, a, another project uh, using this. Okay, so the first use case um, Uh, I want now to, to go through a number of uh, use cases. So, uh, if you have a project associated to each task you are working on, let's say, uh, then you can switch from uh, uh, one task to another by switching from one project to another uh, and Oxygen will automatically remember and restore the editing context for each of them restoring the files that were open last time you worked on that project as well as preserving the editing uh, page for, for, for the file whether it was open in text mode or uh, visual authoring, uh, visual editing uh, the author mode or the grid uh, mode and so on but more it will restore also the current position so you can immediately continue to work uh, basically as if the project was not closed so you, you immediately get back to that to the same state. Uh, the layout information uh, contains the position of each side view, which side view is available, uh, its state, whether it's uh, visible or uh, it will uh, hide automatically uh, the toolbars, uh, what actions are available on the toolbars, where they are placed and so on. And by default, uh, Oxygen will evolve the layout uh, so the ch and the changes that you make to the layout um, will be shared uh, between uh, projects. Uh, but you can control even better uh, this if you uh, set Oxygen to remember the layout changes for each project. Then each project will uh, evolve the layout and that will be uh, private for that project, will not be shared uh, anymore. So let's, uh, let's go to the demo one, which is the second one, <laughs> uh, switching between uh, projects. So we, we will look and see uh, how changing between projects restores the editing context and then uh, we will enable the option to remember layout changes for each project and then we can see uh, that changes to the layout will not affect other projects and will be will remain automatically associated with uh, uh, all the changes that we make in a project will remain private to that project. So let me switch to Oxygen. <coughs> and I have uh, for this demo one I have two projects. Uh, 
uh, sample1.xpr and this uh, test1.xpr. So first, if we open the sample1 project, we open the sample data file here, for instance, and we will place the caret between these uh, two angle brackets, right? Now, let me switch back to uh, this one, and now we open the test1 XPR, and here we open another file, test.data, and let's place uh, the caret in the title, let's say here, between ang these angle brackets, right? Now, if we switch to the sample one project, you can see that it restores the sample.data file and the caret is maintained exactly at that location. Let's say I do some work here and then uh, when I switch back to continue my work on test one, I get the test data file and the caret is placed where uh, I left the caret. Right. So, in this way, Oxygen allows you to uh, switch tasks without any overhead uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what uh, restoring where you were uh, when you worked on, uh, on, uh, uh, on that task. Now, if we uh, make a change to the layout, uh, for instance, if we, uh, let's say, close the uh, entities, the elements view, right? So, we do not have entities and elements side views here. If we switch to the sample project, uh, you can see that uh, entities and elements also disappear from, from uh, this uh, stack of views. That's because the layout by default is shared between the projects, but if we go to Options Preferences, Application Layout, and we say Remember Layout Changes for each project, okay. Now, uh, for this project, for instance, uh, let's say we don't need the transformation scenarios, uh, we do not need the model view, and maybe we don't need the attributes view, right? So, we closed all the side views, and if we move to the uh, test one project, we have the side views here. Now, if we go back to the sample one project, you see that uh, the layout is restored automatically for this project. So, now when I switch between projects, the context uh, is restored not only for uh, what files were open, where the caret uh, was positioned and so on, but also uh, what uh, uh, side views and where they are located will be, this information will be preserved and restored uh, for each uh, project. Uh, I have this, this option is disabled by default, but in my case, I always enable that uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, so, so that when I switch to a, a project, uh, I do not get um, um, other views that I'm not interested, that I may have made available in a different uh, project. So, I do not share the layout information between multiple projects. That's, that's my uh, preference. So, let's move uh, to the slides. So, uh, action options are uh, accessible through the options preferences uh, menu. And there, you can see on almost every page uh, this uh, uh, this setting here uh, that allow you to 
switch uh, those settings that are uh, on that page to be stored within the project rather than being stored in the global user options. So when Oxygen looks for the value of a specific option, it will first uh, uh, try to see if the, there is a project level uh, setting, cor uh, if there are project level settings corresponding to that preferences page. If yes, then if uh, uh, the, that option is specified there, it will be used. Otherwise, the default will be used. If there are no project options uh, for that uh, preferences page, then Oxygen will look in the global user settings if uh, that option is specified. Otherwise, it will use the defaults. Um, it is important to note that uh, only the options that you change are stored both in the project or uh, global user settings. Uh, if an option is uh, identical to the default option, we do not store that information. This allows uh, defaults to change between different uh, Oxygen versions. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, that will, will not be possible. So let's explore now a few very interesting uh, use cases for project level uh, options. And uh, I have here the obvious one, different options for different projects, uh, share settings between users, uh, project specific layouts, and customizing the authoring experience for a specific uh, project. So the obvious thing this enables uh, is to be able to have different settings for different projects. So you can control uh, the oxygen settings for uh, a project. And uh, for example, we'll look uh, at a couple of projects uh, that will impose uh, specific formatting settings. Uh, more precisely, they will uh, control the indenting and the line width uh, for formatting XML documents. So let's go to Oxygen. And if we look uh, into uh, the preferences, um, so let's see. That's uh, another trick when you, uh, we have this uh, filter functionality, so when you want to look for an option, you can try to search and then you'll see all the, the, the options pages that contain uh, that word that you just uh, read right here. So if we look at the, the formatting option, we can see that uh, uh, we have the default is uh, an indent of four spaces um, and the line width is 100 uh, characters, right? So four spaces and 100 characters. Now if we switch, uh, so if we open this project, um, and we check for the preferences, you can see that this uh, uh, page is marked with this P letter, which means uh, it's, uh, it's stored at the project level, and we switched this uh, ratio from global options to project options. So now, although the defaults are four spaces and 100 uh, characters, when I open this project sample 2.xpr, these settings are two spaces and 80 uh, characters, right? And this is, uh, you know, what uh, the, the formatting and indenting does on this uh, file. You can see here it's uh, uh, from 1 to 80. 1, there are 80 characters is the maximum uh, uh, line width in this case. So 
go back here and then we have this test 2 project and uh, in this case uh, we can see that we have a longer line here so if we format an indent this line is uh, from 1 to 121 so it's 120 characters and if we look into the options uh, we can see that the formatting options are with four spaces and 120 uh, characters for the line width. Right, so uh, when we move uh, between these two projects we automatically get those uh, specific formatting settings for each uh, project. So we don't need to um, uh, worry if someone else uh, will use this project that they will format our documents with different settings. Once we impose the formatting options and we store them at the project level, anyone using this project will use the same uh, formatting options. Uh, the next uh, demo for project uh, options uh, is focusing on layout information. For many users, uh, oxygen may look uh, intimidating at first uh, because there are uh, many actions available, many side views and so on. But if you provide them access through, to oxygen through a project that customizes the layout, then uh, it may look very simple and the user interface will contain only the actions or the side views uh, that they need for that project. So I prepared two projects that, uh, project that enforce uh, layout information and one layout will be uh, focused on uh, authoring, so it's an authoring layout and another is a layout for reviewing. Right, so let's go back to Oxygen and uh, the first project, uh, this sample 3.xpr uh, is the project that, that uh, provides a layout uh, focused on uh, authoring. And as you can see, now we have only the project view and a couple of actions. If we open uh, a data file, for instance, then we have only the data specific actions uh, and some authoring actions that allow us to uh, set full tags or control the tags, control the profiling and uh, that's all. Right? So we have uh, data specific actions, controlling the tags, profiling and uh, new creating new files, opening files, uh, refreshing and so on. So, so very simple layout with only the attributes view here and the project. Right, so so this is a uh, and this changes automatically when we switch to this project. Why? Within the project, you see we have this uh, layout folder and this simple dot layout file, which was saved using window uh, save uh, export layout. Right, so once you play around closing views. Uh, using the configure toolbars action and make available uh, or remove the toolbars that you do not want and so on, you can save the layout information to a file. Then within the options preferences we go, we went to the application layout and switch this to be stored at the project level. And here we specified rather than the default layout, we specified a custom layout which is project directory layout simple dot layout. So the layout file that we saved within uh, the project directory in the layout subfolder. Right. So whenever we open this project, Oxygen we will have these project specific options which instruct Oxygen to uh, use this layout uh, file which is again within the project folder inside the layout 
uh, subfolder, right? Now, when we go back to our main project, we restore the we are back to the default layout. This uh, test project. So, if I switch to this, uh, this has a layout tuned for reviewing. So, in this case, if we open a data file, you see that we have the track changes, we have the uh, comments, uh, add comment, we have color highlights, so we have uh, only uh, actions uh, useful for reviewing, right? So, uh, and uh, the editor is very simple, we do not have even the attributes view, right? So, we have uh, only the project, uh, the file, the editors, and uh, spell checking, navigation, actions to go through different where we are in the file, uh, and uh, uh, reviewing actions. Again, now if we switch back to the, this project, we go back to the authoring, simplified authoring layout with the uh, data actions, we go back to this, we are in a reviewing layout, we get back to the main project and we get a, a default layout. This is very useful uh, also uh, if you teach someone, because you can provide them uh, uh, a very simple layout in the first lesson, then add another action maybe in the second le lesson, the validate action on, on, uh, uh, on the toolbar and so on. Uh, again, this uh, project, if we look into the options, we can see that the application layout page is stored at the project level. In this case, we have the project directory layout test layout, which is uh, the file that we have within the project folder here. Okay, let's move on. Uh, before uh, we discuss about uh, customizing the authoring experience for a specific uh, XML language like DITA or Dogbook or TI or XHTML and so on or your own uh, XML uh, language, we need to just to talk a little about how Oxygen supports uh, such an XML vocabulary. Because you can uh, uh, you can have uh, you can either work generically with an XML file and have uh, schemas or DTDs, CSS file, XSLT style sheets specified within the document or um, specified uh, whenever you need them, uh, when you validate or when you transform and so on, uh, or you can have a pre-configured set of options that instruct Oxygen uh, what schema or DTD to use, uh, what CSS files to use when moving to the visual editing mode, uh, what uh, XSLT scripts to use on, uh, and what transformations to apply on such a document. So, we have this concept uh, called Oxygen Framework that basically is a collection of resources and configuration information needed to support working with an XML language. And Oxygen comes uh, with uh, such frameworks for DITA, Dogbook, TI, XHTML, and so on. Uh, and anyone can define uh, such a framework for, uh, you know, for your own XML vocabulary, uh, for your desired XML format, as we did for uh, DITA, you can, or Dogbook and so on, you can do uh, the same uh, pre-configured uh, set of options and resources for any XML vocabulary. Now, if you want to modify, uh, so if you may have specific needs for a project and you want to modify the default uh, support that Oxygen provides for DITA or Dogbook and so on, uh, you have the option uh, to define a new framework and set a higher priority so it will be identified first or maybe delete the existing framework that Oxygen provides. Um, uh, 
uh, or uh, even a better option is uh, we have support to extend uh, an existing framework. And in this case, uh, Oxygen will store only the changes you make to that framework and it will apply those changes to the actual version of that framework when you use the extension. So basically if you define an extension, let's say for data at Oxygen version 17, or if you defined an extension for data at Oxygen version 17, then when you use that extension with Oxygen 18, then your extension will be applied on the data framework that comes with Oxygen version 18. So those changes that you made to the data framework will be reapplied at version 18 on the data framework that comes with version 18. So in this uh, way you inherit the changes, the improvements that we make to a framework between different Oxygen versions. Uh, so we will use this uh, support for extending frameworks uh, in the examples, in the following examples that present uh, customizing the, the authoring uh, uh, experience. So um, this is a, a, a very important use case, I, I believe, uh, when you want to customize uh, the support for data or for Dobook or for TI and so on for a specific uh, uh, project. And we will explore in this demo uh, two uh, techniques for doing that. In the first example, we'll customize uh, the data framework uh, to make uh, hint, uh, hint information always visible. Uh, Oxygen has a, a, a layer, a CSS layer that uh, presents hints, uh, you know, uh, what your description is for, how you should write that. Uh, so we will make that always visible uh, and we will also uh, enforce some uh, uh, rules uh, using a schematron schema that will be part of the any uh, data topic uh, validation uh, for that project, so specific to that project. So we will extend the data framework uh, directly within uh, uh, the uh, Oxygen options um, and we will instruct Oxygen to store those options at the project level so uh, they will be basically stored within the project XPR uh, file. So whenever the project is loaded, the data extension will be loaded applying ex uh, uh, the changes that we made uh, to to the data um, to the default data uh, framework. So let's look uh, how that works. So we are at uh, four demo four sample. So here we have a, a data file, uh, and as you can see, there's uh, this long title uh, has ten words. Uh, there's no warning on this, you know, that's long or uh, too long maybe. And we have this uh, hints layer that can be activated by the user and then we have this uh, uh, hints presented to the user, you know, wh what they should do uh, for this uh, top, for this document, uh, how the sh title should be written and so on. Right, so uh, in our uh, customization, we want to enforce this and we want to apply uh, this uh, schematron file that checks, uh, you know, uh, uh, that uh, for a title uh, we have, uh, we, we need to have less than 10 words, let's say. So now if we open the sample for XPR, um, and look into the preferences, we can see that this uh, document type association page contains uh, the frameworks, information about the frameworks. So this is stored at the project level and we have, uh, so to create an extension we select the framework and say extend, right, so 
I, we have already this data extension uh, which is stored uh, uh, internally, that means within the uh, oxygen options, which are stored within the project, at the project level. So now if we look at this project, uh, on the author page, um, I made the hints always visible. By default, it's an alternate style. So I remove the alternate style and I remove the title and that means this will be applied automatically. And on the validation, I added this uh, validation unit here that says uh, use the project directory URL rules, rules SEH file to validate uh, all the topics. So now if we open the same sample file, uh, you see that we get uh, first the hints automatically and there's no option to enable or disable hints, so they are enforced. And we also get uh, this error here that says title should have no more than nine words, you have ten words, right? Which is basically enforced by uh, this rule uh, that we have here uh, that checks for the number of uh, words in, in the title. Right, so whenever we work on this project, we get this customization of the data framework automatically. If we, again, if we open the same file from a different project, like this project that uses the default data support, then we do not have an error here and the hints are not enforced. Uh, the hints CSS are, uh, is not enforced, is not enabled automatically for this uh, document. In the second example, uh, we have a slightly different approach. Uh, in this case, we extend the Dobook framework, but we store that externally. In a, uh, so, so we have dot framework files that store uh, the framework configuration. Um, so we place that in a folder and then we declare uh, the parent of that folder to contain uh, frameworks. Uh, again, we have uh, in the oxygen options, we can specify what folders uh, are containers for uh, uh, frameworks. So we, uh, uh, the, the advantage with this is that it's more easy to share that framework file. Oxygen has also an add-on uh, mechanism that allows uh, an easy distribution of, for frameworks and plugins. Uh, in this case, we add an alternate CSS to make titles red and we remove some of the uh, actions from the toolbar, like the bold, italic, and underline action. Let's move to oxygen and uh, uh, here's uh, a dobook uh, uh, document and you see here I do not have an option to make titles red and I have the bold uh, italic and underline actions here in the toolbar. Now if I open this uh, uh, oxygen project file, uh, we can see, and if we open the same dogbook file, we can see that we have these red titles, which is alternate, so it can be enabled or disabled. You can have uh, a CSS that marks maybe um, highlights uh, different content based on uh, some conditions and so on, uh, rather than making red titles. And you see that there is no bold italic underline uh, uh, here. And the framework is defined in this customized uh, dogbook framework. This is the uh, dot .framework file and here's the research that we added. Uh, red title CSS which basically says uh, match on a title and make uh, the color red. If we look uh, in the oxygen options, we set the locations page to be at the project level and that says uh, oxygen you should look in the project directory frameworks for uh, additional frameworks. And then 
uh, this extension is stored in uh, uh, in the, uh, the 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 project folder is this test folder, and the framework is stored within frameworks customized DB uh, dogbook dogbook five extension dot framework. So this will be loaded automatically by Oxygen as a framework because we define this folder to contain uh, Oxygen frameworks, and this adds these red titles, uh, those CSS, in the outer page, and in the toolbar, uh, it removes from the toolbar the bold italic underline that we can see if we look at the default dog book. You see we have bold italic underline here, and in the customized version, uh, in the extended version, we do not have those actions. If you disable these from here, then uh, uh, you see that we get back the default support. Bold italic underline is here. Uh, we do not have red titles option anymore, right? So now, if we enable this, then uh, our extension of the book, then we get the red titles and the bold italic underline uh, actions are removed from here. Okay, I think I need to speed up a little the uh, rest of the uh, of my session. So that's I think uh, one of the very important uh, uh, use cases. And now, as I mentioned by default, when you define a transformation scenario in Oxygen. Uh, this is a configuration when you say uh, run this XML document through this XSLT style sheet or run this data map through the data open toolkit with these options and so on. So this is a transformation scenario. This information is saved by default within the project. So by default you can share these uh, transformation configurations or scenarios with other people that use the same project file. Or if you have multiple projects, you do not get uh, all the transformation uh, available all the time. So you get only the transformation relevant to your task, to your project uh, visible. And you can of course define some transformations to be stored uh, in the global options so they will be available across all your projects. So let's quickly uh, look also uh, through this. So in the first case, uh, so uh, we have uh, this sample 5 project that contains a transformation uh, called personnel that, uh, so if we switch to this project uh, and we open the personnel.xml, you can see that we have these uh, uh, associated scenarios and uh, in the project we have this personnel transformation. So when we either uh, say we want to publish uh, and apply scenario, then uh, we get this uh, transformation which basically say uh, apply on the current file the uh, same file uh, but with the, the, file, the same file name but with the extension XSL and uh, present the output as XML and XHTML. Right, so that's the, the transformation. Uh, but if we move to uh, a different project, like this uh, test file project, we have the same files basically. So here we do not have uh, any project uh, transformation configured for uh, for this, right? So uh, that personal uh, transformation is available only when we are in the sa sa uh, sample 5 project because that's stored uh, at the project level. So if you want to create a new transformation scenario, you can choose between different options, XML with XSLT, XSLT with XQuery, on transformations, DTA, OT, uh, XPro transformation, and so on. But let's say we, we choose a transformation and see here we have this storage that says project options, which is the default or global options. So if you remain with the default, the scenario will be stored uh, within the project. If you move 
to global options, it will be a scenario that is shared between all uh, your projects. Okay, so some of the actions uh, Oxygen provides are aware of the project in the sense that they can be applied on multiple files uh, 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 from the project. And you have some choices to determine uh, whether uh, it's the set of all the project files or is the set of the selected uh, project files. Uh, examples of uh, such actions are the expat uh, evaluation, the expat search, uh, find replacing files, XML refactoring actions. Uh, there are also uh, available uh, batch actions uh, that are uh, set as contextual actions on the project view. So they can be applied on the current selected project resources. Uh, and these actions allow you to find replacing files, to again run expat queries, check spelling, format and indent a set of files, uh, apply transformations or validate uh, a set of documents. So uh, let's move to another sample project. Uh, here. Uh, and we can uh, quickly run, so we have a, uh, the sample flowers uh, data project and now um, for the expat evaluation we can say project or selected project resources uh, as the scope for, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for evaluating uh, uh, expat expressions. So if we say title for instance here, then we get all the titles from uh, this concepts folder. So we have here basically uh, a few files and we will get the titles only from there. If we move the selection to flowers and we run uh, this expression, then we get uh, all the, the titles from all uh, the files that are uh, in the flowers folder and in, in its subfolders. So we get all the titles and here uh, you can find also uh, in which file uh, Oxygen uh, determined that and of course if you uh, double click on the results you will open that file and the uh, title will be selected there. Right. Now we can uh, uh, take a look also at the batch action uh, running a batch validation and then a find and replace uh, in files. Let me go back here and open the demo 7 project so here we can say you know we can run the the validate action on all the files i intentionally made some errors here so you can uh, see them so I added some, uh, let's open also the map to provide the context. I added, uh, I renamed the paragraph as P2 for instance uh, and uh, I also uh, let me validate again because the uh, the map also provides uh, context information so now we we set the the map to uh, to oxygen the, to provide the context so we should be able to identify uh, yes so this is another error that I made I put an X before this uh, uh, this key so the actual key is perennial not X uh, perennial and I wanted also to show you the uh, file replacing files. So we can go to this and say uh, file replacing files. So we can replace, for instance, uh, 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 we can 
enable, so we have also this uh, XML uh, specific search options, so if we want to rename uh, P2, let's say, to uh, to find P2 or rename that with uh, P, we can say that we want to do that only in element names, right, so then we can say uh, replace all and uh, the preview will show us uh, the changes that will be applied and we can see that uh, this will be applied only uh, in element names so we we are sure that we do not make this change in text or in attribute values or in other parts and then you can say ok and that will be uh, uh, the, the, the change will be applied and then we can say also find replacing files uh, we disable uh, and let's say experiential with replace all preview and then we we uh, we see that oxygen identified that if of course if there are uh, 100 references for this you will see them uh, and then you can uh, say okay apply the change and now uh, this uh, this is made uh, valid Okay, uh, we are uh, on the final steps. Uh, uh, master file support is an advanced uh, topic. Uh, master files uh, support was added to enable working with modules. So basically, if we take the, an example with XSLT, you can say um, this style sheet is a style sheet that we intend to use to transform an XML document with and other style sheets that you may have uh, that are reachable from this are modules. They are not intended to be used directly to transform a document. They just support this main style sheet by providing some modules. Uh, and those modules should be validated in the context of, of the main style sheet because they may refer some variables which are defined in that master style sheet. Right? So, uh, and another advanced uh, uh, functionality is refactoring. Uh, when uh, when you rename a file, there may be references to that file. So Oxygen will automatically um, uh, change also all those references when you rename or move a file. And we also have uh, XML uh, refactoring actions. Uh, which allow you to trigger uh, XSLT or XQuery update scripts over multiple files through a nice user interface, uh, allowing setting parameters and so on. I think we had a previous webinar uh, covering XML refactoring. If you look in our events section and the past events, uh, you can find that. A quick demo for this functionality. Um, I created a, a a project here. Uh, the f I split this uh, uh, personal.xsl extracting uh, in person.xsl extracting a template. So this personal XSL as you can see includes person XSL and this is valid. This is the master style sheet is valid but if we open the, the, the module it uses this variable which is not declared because that's actually declared in the uh, in the master style sheet. Now, in order to uh, have this valid, we can just uh, say uh, enable master file support, and then mark uh, this uh, as a master file. And you can see automatically, Oxygen uh, marks this module as valid, recognizing uh, this variable. And also, if you want to uh, use the content completion, we'll offer this variable and so on, right? So Oxygen will automatically detect uh, uh, that this is a module. So this is uh, an advanced functionality and very useful, uh, especially for uh, for development. Uh, and uh, the last part is uh, a real project, uh, our Oxygen XML user guide which is also generally available on GitHub at github.com slash oxygenxml slash user guide. And here uh, we take advantage of uh, uh, using uh, preferences 
uh, project level uh, preferences uh, by providing uh, uh, by setting at the project level different pages like the document type association to customize uh, the data framework uh, specific to our user guide by enforcing uh, schematron rules quite a large number of such rules uh, controlling the profiling conditional settings uh, colors and style uh, spell checking and dictionaries so we we want we have specific words that are not in the dictionary dictionary but they are uh, valid in our user guide so we add the list of with uh, those words uh, uh, to the project uh, format and index uh, setting white spaces XML catalog information we define uh, uh, FO processor we define XC, an XCP configuration uh, we set the data to support to use data 2.x uh, rather than 1.8, Oxygen supports both. Um, and we also control what is indexed by uh, Lucene search and transformation scenarios. So if you, if we open, uh, let me see if I can find that quickly. Uh, if I open the user guide project, uh, you can see uh, in the, the preferences, uh, basically, uh, all these pages which are bold and marked with P are stored, uh, they store project level uh, options. They, they have this switch uh, enabled here. So we have the uh, specific elements to be ignored um, and so on. As I said, uh, 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 we have a data extension uh, that customizes the data for our user guide including the validation which co contains our project specific rules and so on and so on so uh, I, I just uh, I enumerated those uh, uh, changes that we make here uh, this is actually a preview of uh, oxygen version 18.1 and one of the addition is this uh, uh, button in the in the options that allow you to immediately see uh, all the pages that are defined at the project level, right? So uh, they are marked uh, by default with this uh, P, uh, but in uh, in the, the next release of Oxygen version 18.1, you'll have also this button so you can quickly see, you know, which uh, uh, pages are defined uh, to be stored at the project level. So here, for instance, the uh, data uh, OT2.x which uh, is what we are using for our user guide and we want to enforce that. So any uh, technical writer uh, or any user that will open this project will automatically get these settings. Uh, so it's a, it's a very useful and easy way to share uh, settings between uh, different users. So, <laughs> thank you for staying with me, and uh, uh, maybe Radu can help with uh, uh, some of the questions that I'm sure you uh, you had during the webinar. George, that was a very nice overview. <laughs> As you saw, we have so many features related to the project functionality, and this could have been easily split in two webinars, but George covered a lot of ground today, so... <laughs> Yeah, that, that was very nice. He showed you how to organize your project and how you can use a project to save specific settings and share them with the rest of your team. Uh, now back to the questions. A uh, question from V. Kong. Uh, normally I organize my files using a specific uh, my files of a specific project under a folder of a project. So I have various folders. <laughs> Can I have an Oxygen project view of all the different projects that dot around in my filing system? So, as an answer, the Oxygen project view can open only one project at once. So you cannot have multiple projects opened, but you can switch between them. You, you can have a logical folder uh, and uh, place all the project uh, files there. So in my case, uh, 
uh, for for this main project that I used during the webinar, I basically added links to uh, all the, the the demo projects uh, into this uh, uh, logical folder. So then I can uh, from here I can more easily you know open uh, uh, sample seven or uh, you know whatever uh, project. Uh, uh, I want, but uh, what I find really useful is this drop down that allows to switch between uh, the recent project that's that's what I always use a question from uh, Brad Scott if there is no project panel open, how do I know whether a project is currently active and uh, the thing is even if you close the project view the project is still active the settings sa saved in the project still influence your workspace so uh, if you want to avoid having those settings you need to switch to another project yes so so the the fact that uh, 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 a project is active or not does not depend whether the the project view is visible or not. Some users, as I said at the beginning, they just close the project view, but then they basically use uh, a single project, uh, thus not taking advantage of any of the project functionality uh, that we provide. Uh, question from Alan Hauser. So uh, he said that after loading the project from the Schematron webinar, he couldn't figure out how to remove the Schematron rules checking from the data validation scenario, and Alan didn't want to switch to another project. So he he wants a setting to be able to revert to to no project. Is there such a, such a setting, George? So um, I think Alan refers to an action that we should implement called close project. Right now you cannot close a current project, you can only switch to to one or another project. Well I think there, there is a, a fake project basically if you uh, remove the uh, the current project, if you delete the project, current project and start oxygen I think it will go into a strange state where it has like a uh, virtual project uh, that's kind of a no project uh, state uh, but uh, uh, usually uh, you, if you want to go back to uh, you know I always have a, a, a test.xpr uh, project that I use when I do different types of testing or working uh, usually so you can just uh, uh, move, uh, have such a project or use the sample.xpr project that comes with Oxygen is the first project that's opened when you start Oxygen and that does not have any project level settings so you can always go back to that uh, project if you want kind of a default uh, uh, set of settings uh, to have a default set of settings a uh, question from Vincent Lizzi. Is there a way to perform batch validation on an arbitrary set of files containing contained in a folder that, it, that are not part of a project? For example, I have a project set up with a validation scenario that I use with many files that I receive. Can I do a bulk validate op operation without adding each file to the project? And my answer is that batch validation only works on folders linked in project so when performing batch validation you do not have a scope which could be set to an arbitrary folder location but you do not need to add individual files to, to the project you can add the parent folder for example mm -hmm. yes yeah, so, so you don't need to add each file uh, to 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 the project you you can say add folder and this uh, uh, you know it, this for instance will add all the the demos folder and then you uh, you can say validate uh, and then all the files from this uh, uh, the, the 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 batch validation will run on all the files from this uh, uh, folder and it will give you a report uh, 
uh, going into subfolders also. Uh, another thing that you can let me cancel is that you can control is that once you add uh, let's say uh, such a folder you can use the filters uh, so then you can say uh, you know demo one for instance oh sorry demo one uh, will be hidden and now you you can see that uh, we do not have demo one anymore in this uh, within the demos folder because it's filtered out uh, by the this uh, project filters right so you may uh, use this in case uh, the folder that you added contains some additional files uh, that you do not want to validate or things like that a question about uh, a recording being available from Richard Wood and yes we will have a recording available in a couple of days and send you guys an email uh, and question from David Diamond for a small team that is working on to document only a single product would there be any reason to have more than one project? Uh, well I guess uh, uh, one use case uh, to have multiple projects for the same actual uh, documentation project uh, may be uh, in order to uh, have something you know like uh, uh, like the second demo I think it was second demo uh, where uh, or not uh, uh, where you control the layout right so like uh, like in that example I presented uh, uh, I think it's uh, the third demo yes so in demo 3 uh, so you can access the same project but uh, the same uh, documentation project but accessing that through uh, a different XPR file you get other uh, uh, toolbars or other side views uh, and they are organized uh, based on the task that you are performing like in this case uh, authoring or uh, reviewing or you know expert access with uh, uh, everything available right so now I'm in a if I do a reviewing task on that project or if we have people uh, that are their role is to review content then uh, it may be useful to provide them access through uh, such a user interface to 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 this file to the to the project files rather than uh, exposing them to uh, the default uh, settings that uh, you know provide many side views many actions on the toolbar and so on so that may be a, a good use case for having multiple projects even if you have a small team and uh, a single project yeah so various user roles can uh, choose various projects to open and work with and uh, the project XPR file is uh, in XML format so for the most, uh, most advanced use cases you can generate project files uh, by running XSLT style sheets on so you can generate uh, you can have a base project file and, uh, and duplicate it and maybe add settings to it uh, automatically by an XSLT style sheet um, so these are all the questions. George, do, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, so, so thank you for, uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, we uh, uh, will have uh, on our website under the company events, you can find uh, this page that lists uh, the upcoming events. Uh, we will be at a number of conferences, uh, uh, LavaCon, TC World, uh, Data Europe. We organize also the Data Open Toolkit Day, which is a free event. Uh, so you are welcome to participate. There's no uh, cost associated to attend this. And it's conveniently placed at the same location with the Data Europe the day before uh, Data Europe. So it's November 13th. And Data Europe is the following uh, two days. Uh, we uh, have uh, 
already some ideas for uh, a few upcoming webinars this year. This year they will be uh, announced here under upcoming events. Uh, probably the, the following one will be at the beginning of October uh, and then uh, so we, we have a webinar every two, three weeks uh, I think. So you may want to come back to this uh, upcoming events page uh, and uh, check for uh, following webinars or uh, you know uh, follow us on uh, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook and so on <laughs> to get this news or on, uh, look at the Oxygen users uh, list. So thank you again and thank you Radu for uh, your support uh, and I hope to see you next time either in person or virtually to uh, another webinar. Thanks Thank everybody. you and goodbye. Goodbye, have a nice evening.